So, in most of the school computer labs, keyboarding online is already a, a saved bookmark on the computers, but if it's not, just ask your school's field tech to make it a bookmark on there, and that will be nice and easy. You could also put it onto a teacher web page or anything else that will be helpful. Um, the login button is this red one right here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that and you can follow along as well. Each school has um, a login that allows, well two logins. One that allows the students to go in and one that allows the teachers to go in and administer the account. For both of those, the login and password are the same, okay? So if the school login were Katie, the password would also be Katie, okay? So I have a list of what those logins are. So it used to be that when we came to this screen, there were two buttons, one said Java and one said HTML5. Job is gone, yay, we're glad, because HTML5 is much easier. No extra software needed. <laughs> and so you can see that there's really only one main choice for them to click on. So let's go ahead and click on that Keyboarding for Kids button. Okay, so when the kids come to this screen, they're gonna see a list of all of the classes that have been created for this school. So for a computer lab teacher or a keyboarding um, aide, the first thing that I would do between now and October is get the classes set up for everybody. And we'll look at that from the teacher's side. So as the student, they would find the class they're assigned to and click on that. And so then they'll see a list of all of the students that have been added to that class. And then you can see that down at the bottom here, we have another spot for a password. So the first login was just to get us into the school account. This one is to get you into the actual student's account. Now we're finally to basically a menu of all of the things we can choose from <clears throat> within um, our KBK program. The program or the, the bu button they're going to use most often is this one that says lessons menu. But be aware that we also have this free form option and cre created lessons option. That is really nice if you want to just have, uh, just dictate to the students. You could try doing some free form stuff. Or if you want to have some assessments that you have created um, for the students to take, but you don't want to grade them by hand, because I don't like grading keyboarding by hand. Um, and you can go into created lessons. There is a limited amount of created lessons that you can do, and I think it's t just 10. And so that's really what I would do is use it for assessments and maybe some high frequency word drills, okay? And, um, <clears throat> but for the most part, they're going to be going to the lessons menu. Okay, so let's click on the lessons menu. And this is what the program looks like with one, with a couple of exceptions. Because right now we're in demo mode because our licenses are expired, we don't have all of the lessons. You can see how they skip. <laughs> when we get our full licenses, all of, all 64 of those lessons will be there, okay? So the way that it operates is that the students start with lesson one on the left-hand column there which is going to obviously review home row, okay? Then, on this screen, notice up above, you've got line one, line two, line three, and line four. So for every lesson in KBK, you're going to have four lines that they need to complete. So it's not just 64 timings, right? It's whatever 64 times four is. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> And then notice that for each line that they're in, it's going to collect their three best scores, okay? And it wants them to have at least three good scores or to reach a certain words per minute before they move on to the next level. And if they don't do that, it's not gonna show that they've completed the lesson when you do reports and things, okay? 
So I teach the students to work towards having at least three perfect timings before they move on. Now notice I said perfect timings. Right now, starting off, I don't care so much about their speed. What I care about is technique and accuracy. So we are adding in that accuracy component at this point, okay? Because unless you do the timing perfectly without any errors, it's not going to record the score. And so for most of the kids, that means slowing down until you can do it perfectly. And once you've done it perfectly at a certain rate, you can try it again a little faster. But we want technique and accuracy first. Okay. So uh, the program needs to also be book-based. And so you may in your school somewhere have a bunch of KBK books. And if you want to use the books, great, fabulous, use them. They're these nice little flip books. You can put them next to the computer. It's kind of, it's just a slightly different skill to be keying off of a hard copy than it is to be keying off the screen. Not super different, but just a little. So feel free to use the books if you have them, but they've gone to a screen-based program so that if you don't have to have the books anymore. This also means that the kids can do this at home and they don't have to take a book with them. So here's what I'm supposed to be keying. Here's where I'm keying it. This is a 15 second timing, okay? So we can all give this a, a little try here. Go ahead and try your first lesson. And you can do it perfectly or you can make errors just to see what happens. You can try going slow or fast or whatever. <coughs> and when your time is up, it flashes red like it just did and it shows what you typed, okay? And um, you do have options as the teacher to set this up to allow them to see what they're typing as they go or to block that out. Um, I like the block out because they're not supposed to be paying attention to what is going on to the screen and they're not supposed to be staring at their fingers. They're supposed to be looking at the copy. And so having that blackout mode can be really helpful with that sometimes. The other thing is we're, we're going for fluency, right? We don't want to stop and start. It shouldn't be A, A, A. Okay, wait, where's the next key? D, D, D. Oh, I messed that up. Let's fix it. Because if they do that, the timing is going to say, you're taking too long and it'll stop. <laughs> and so fluency is another key component here. And the blackout screen makes them not look at where their mistakes are. Just finish the timing. Then it'll show you if you made mistakes or if you didn't. In fact, let's do this one again, and this time we'll purposely make a mistake. So we can um, click the time remaining or next timing and it'll reset, okay? So this time we'll go ahead and I'll do, oops, I, I did make a mistake. I hit my caps lock. Anyway, A, 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 and then maybe I do A, oops, I meant S, S, S. And so if it's blacked out, I wouldn't be able to see that and there's not that temptation to go fix it. <laughs> and then when I'm done timing, it will show me what I did and highlight the errors that I made, okay? Um, now, notice that off of those two timings, right now I have a best score of 23 words per minute with zero errors. This one, where is that score? There it is. This timing is right here. That time I did 11 words per minute with one error. That timing is not going to be recorded as a best score because I had an error. So I need to try it again, and I need to try to do it without errors. If that means slowing down, great, slow down, okay? Until you get comfortable enough to then start increasing speed. Um, so once I've done this, with three good scores, I'm gonna click on line two. Same process. Line three, same process. Line four, same process. And finally, when I'm done with line four, I'll come back over here and go to the second lesson, okay? And so helping kids understand that progression through the lesson is nice because otherwise you're not gonna have anything to report on later because they skipped things. Um, now, a couple other things. Um, 
This is set up right now to have a minimum word per minute of one, which is fine. That's great to start with. Just keep it right there because we're not focusing on speed yet. Score is required to move on. Right now it actually says I only need one score to move on. You can set that as a teacher. If you want them to get three good scores before they move on, then reset that. And then that's fine. This also says it has a goal of 27 words per minute. I'm going to skip that for a second. Um, well, hold that thought. That's adjustable too. You can set that to be whatever you want it to be. Okay. Also notice that they have the ability to adjust the font size if it's too small for them to see, things like that. They could print the lesson if they really wanted to. All right, now, once your students have gone through these lessons and really used it to build that technique, accuracy, fluency, when you feel confident that their technique is solid, then yes, we do want to encourage increasing speed, okay? And so um, at that point, this goal becomes more important. Let's click on 64 on the left-hand side here where it says all keys. There will be five lessons in KBK that use the full keyboard. And so when we click on that, You'll notice that line one of lesson 64 is still a 15 second timing, but if we go to line two, oh, it's still 15, sorry, line three is 30 seconds. And so for those uh, third and fourth grade uh, requirements, you can come to lessons 60 through 64 and use line three for 30 second timings, okay? Um, then line four, has one minute timings and that's what you need for fifth grade. Now a caution, fifth grade has to take the state keyboarding assessment in the spring of their fifth grade year. That assessment requires that students key a one minute timing that they have never seen before. So as you allow students to practice, they're probably not going to be super aware of the lesson 60 through 64. But what I always did is I used lesson 60 to practice with, but I left 61 through 64 not practiced on so that I could use that for the keyboarding assessment. Um, maybe you practice on 60 and 61 and you use 62, 63, 64 for the test. Now, the reason I leave a few that they've never seen before is because I let them try a few times, but each time they try, they have to have something they've never seen before. That's just what the state requires. So just be careful with the fifth graders. I mean, it's entirely possible that they could have looked at it on their own at home, but we don't want them to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do your best. <laughs> okay. And then remember too that if all else fails, you can always create your own lesson that has a one minute timing that they've never seen before. You can create your own then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Questions from the student side. All right. So let's go up to the top here where it says log out. Click log out. And, <laughs> and then click go home. And that's going to take us back to our main login page. <clears throat> 